Hello, my name is Glenn Hall and today is August 13th, 2020. Today's video is called The Sovereign Man. I may add this to my Mystery of the Beast series. It remains to be seen depending upon how this goes today. The Sovereign Man. For a long time now, I have been reluctant to call myself a sovereign man or a sovereign citizen, as some people like to say, mainly because you hear this kind of language coming from people who are associated with the New Age movement. But over the last few months, I have listened to several people who would probably be considered New Age who are speaking a truth that the church dares not utter. So let me regress then a little from that. Why will the church not utter some profound truths? It's because the church is utterly corrupt, utterly corrupt. It's hard to get that into the fabric of our minds, but just consider everything that you know about the church. Consider the gross rank heresies of the Catholic church, for example the tortures that the Catholics imposed upon anyone that did not agree with them, the righteous men and women who they killed because they would not submit to their false doctrines. And then on the other hand, look what the Protestant church did after they broke away from the Catholic church. Soon you had perversions within the Protestant churches that were just as great. What about Cromwell's war in England where he destroyed many of the Catholics who lived there? Was that a righteous thing to do? The Lord apprehended me in 1977. And from that time until the year 2000, I was involved in some, some type of a church, usually uh, very involved. My wife was usually on the worship team. I often handled... Um, dealing with the sound system later in the early 90s for several years i was an elder in a a mega church in kansas city one that you would know the name of if i were to say it typically we were involved in charismatic churches churches that believed in that the Holy Spirit was alive and well and still on planet Earth and that men still walked in spiritual gifts. But we, my wife and I, we always saw false gifts. We saw many people who claimed to walk in words of knowledge, or prophetic words, or healing. Without fail, everyone turned out to be a false prophet. Some fell in disgrace because of sin. The last church that my wife and I 
attempted to join was a common Baptist church, not charismatic. We went there for two or three months, went through their initiation classes, and then on a Sunday, my wife, my our five children and I were on the front row to join the church. And the elder who was responsible for that saw us, clearly saw us, we were in the front row, and did not call us to the front to join the church. I think that the elders, I think there were three, I think they were afraid of me. Afraid of a man who dares to read the scripture for himself and dares to hear God for himself and dares to have an opinion that may be different than their opinion. The church is corrupt. The church tries to put all of its people under its thumb. Here a pope, there a pope, everywhere a pope, pope. The Protestant church is nothing more than little popedoms here and there and everywhere. So we have not been in a church for 20 years. And I am so glad of it. Oh, you'll quote Hebrews 10, forsake not the assembling with the gathering together of the brothers. Do you know what that really means? Forsake not the episanugagi. That is the doctrine of the second coming of Jesus Christ. Forsake not the doctrine of Jesus Christ's second coming, especially as you see the day approach. Especially. And if you listen to my teachings, you know that I do not forsake it. I teach it. That's one of the scriptures men have used to keep you under their spell, under their authority, under their jurisdiction. And so recently I have listened to some men and women speak about the sovereign citizen. And especially within the context of the current crisis in the world. And if you don't think we're in a crisis, then you don't know what in the world is going on because this COVID thing has grabbed the entire world and could lead to incredibly horrible scenarios. What if they force you to take a vaccine for the COVID virus? Are you going to take it? On what authority are you not going to take it? That was the question that I had to ask and answer. And then I realized I am a sovereign individual. You will not touch me. You will not force your vaccine on me. And if I had minor children, you will not touch my child. Are you kidding me? You will have to kill me first. Do you see how important this is? Are you willing? Are you willing to stand up for truth? Who is willing? What a bunch of cowards we are running around with masks on our faces thinking that we are doing the right thing. Most of the time, it's the stupid thing to do. If you go somewhere where that establishment requires a mask, put it on. It's their establishment. Or don't go there. 
If you're living at a place that is requiring a mask of everyone, leave. Move away while you still can. But once you have come to a place that you know God has led you like I am today and have been for the last 20 years, in the wilderness, in the wilderness, I live in the wilderness by God's design because he has used it to teach me and my wife. And we're not leaving. And if they come for me to inflict their torture upon me through a forced vaccination or a forced imprisonment or whatever the case may be, I'm not going with them. I'm not letting them. It will be over my dead body or as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said. God can save us, O king, so we will not bow down. But if not, we will still only worship God. We have to be there. Now's the time. If you're not there, get there. So many people are afraid to think of truth for themselves. Look what Jesus said. Matthew chapter 6. Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what, we, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? You know, we don't have a greater need than food. If we have no food, we die. And Jesus says, don't worry about it. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. And yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things. The nations seek after all these things. The world seeks after all these things. And your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So many people worry and fret about everything. But the key, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then let's look at Luke 20. One day as Jesus was teaching the people in the temple and preaching the gospel, the chief priests and the scribes with the elders came up and said to him, tell us by what authority you do these things, or who is it that gave you this authority? He answered them, I also will ask you a question. Now you tell me, was the baptism of John from heaven or from man? In other words, did God give John that authority or did men? Was it one of you priests who gave John the authority to do that or was John led of God? And they discussed it with one another saying, if we say from heaven, he will say, why did you not believe him? But if we say from man, all the people will stone us to death, for they are convinced that John was a prophet. So they answered that they did not know where it came from. And Jesus said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. We live under one authority. 
the authority of God. And if someone compels us to do something that infringes upon God's authority, such as something against my person, against my body, they try to get me to take a chip, they try to get me to take a vaccine, they try to, do some, try to get me to do something that violates my conscience, like as a nurse participate in an abortion. How many people have gone ahead and done it because their job called for it? Who has been willing to lose their job? Not enough people. Not enough. People go along with the satanic agenda of Babylon the Great. A lot of willing people chemtrailed our skies for over 20 years, poisoning us, poisoning our land, disrupting the climate. And they had nothing to do with the agenda. They just wanted a paycheck. Men lied about going to the moon. Look at the video of how they looked in that television conference after they went to the moon. Oh my. Men have been afraid to stand up for truth. Are you willing to stand up for truth? Luke 20, again, verse 19, the scribes and the chief priests sought to lay hands on Jesus at that very hour, for they perceived that he had told a parable against them, but they feared the people. So they watched him and sent spies who pretended to be sincere that they might catch him in something he said, so as to deliver him up to the authority and jurisdiction of the governor. So they asked him, teacher, we know that you speak and teach rightly and show no partiality but truly teach the way of God. Is it lawful for us to give tribute to Caesar or not? But he perceived their craftiness and said to them, show me a denarius. Whose likeness and inscription does it have? They said Caesar's. And he said to them, then render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. Have you thought through what is Caesar's and what is God's? Do you know that which is Caesar's? Do you know that which is God's? Now is the day when we need to think through these things. We need to, we need to be clear in our minds. What will we do when we are challenged? Will we speak up for the truth? Will we speak up for the freedom of our own bodies? Or will we bow to the image of the beast? Will we take the mark of the beast? How many have already done that? As I've taught before, men for millennia have taken the mark of the beast and men for millennia have bowed down to the image of the beast, just as they did with Nebuchadnezzar's image 2,600 years ago. Let's go to another one. When they came to Capernaum, Jesus is one of these, the collectors of the two drachma tax went up to Peter and said, does your teacher not pay the tax? He said, yes. And when he came into the house, Jesus spoke to him first saying, what do you think, Simon? From whom do kings of the earth take toll or tax? From their sons or from others? And when he said from others, Jesus said to him, then the sons are free. Then the sons are free. Do you remember what John chapter one, verse 13 says? It says that to those who believed in Jesus, 
He gave the right to become sons of God. The sons are free. The sons are free men. The sons are sovereign. We are sovereign. You cannot touch me. I am untouchable. I am a child of the king. As Jesus was being led to be crucified, he said, You would have no authority over me unless it were given you by God. This government, this United States government, this state of Missouri government, this municipal government in which I am sitting right now, has no authority over my body. It can exact a tax for something like a road. Render to Caesar that which is Caesar's. There are legitimate taxes. And it's legitimate to pay those taxes. But no government has authority over my body. No government has the authority to make a law concerning what I put into my body. This must be understood. How did Jesus begin his ministry? John chapter 2. Right after the wedding at Cana, the first sign Jesus did, the Passover of the Jews was at hand and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found those who were selling oxen and sheep and pigeons and the money changers sitting there. And making a whip of cords, he drove them out of the temple with the sheep and the oxen. And he poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And he told those who sold the pigeons, take these things away, do not make my father's house a house of trade. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. How could Jesus do this? Because he had authority. Authority given by God, and this was God's house. He did this similar thing at the end of his ministry in Mark chapter 11 verse 15 and they came to Jerusalem and he entered the temple and began to drive out those who sold and those who bought in the temple and he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold pigeons and he would not allow anyone to carry anything through the temple and he was teaching them and saying to them is it not written my house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations but you have made it a den of robbers Jesus had authority. And it's because he exercised his authority that the rulers then conspired to kill him. Verse 18, the chief priests and the scribes heard it and were seeking a way to destroy him for they feared him because all the crowd was astonished at his teaching and when evening came, they went out of the city. So it was just a few days later that Jesus was crucified. We now live at the end of the age. The eighth beast is destroying Babylon the Great now. But it is still not clear what we are going to have to fight or endure. And it seems to me that the scriptures teach that this eighth beast is going to set up or allow the false prophet to set up an image to him so that people will worship the image of the beast. That's what Revelation 13 says.
Revelation 17 shows us this beast again, but it tells us this time that this beast has been commissioned by God to destroy, the, to destroy Babylon the Great. However, it also says that this beast persecutes the lamb. Are we going to have a three and a half year period of time of great tribulation upon believers? It's possible. Our entire history has been a history of tribulation. The overcomers of God have been killed throughout history from the beginning. And all of their blood is attributed to Babylon the Great. Babylon the Great, the satanic power that has ruled the beast kingdoms of the earth forever. But God's two witnesses of which you and I need to be, I consider myself one of the witnesses. My wife is another you should have a witness that works with you. Look at the authority of the two witnesses. Then I was given, this is Revelation 11. Then I was given a measuring rod like a staff and I was told, rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and those who worship there. But do not measure the court outside the temple. Leave that out. For it is given over to the nations, and they will trample the holy city for 42 months. The holy city has been trampled forever. This is why I say the 42 months is a time period that has lasted for the entire age. And I will grant authority to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy for 1260 days clothed in sackcloth. It's the same period of time. 42 months, 1260 days, three and a half years, a time, times, and half a time. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands that stand before the Lord of the earth. I derive my authority from the Lord of the earth. And if anyone would harm them, fire pours from their mouth and consumes their foes. If anyone would harm them, this is how he is doomed to be killed. My word is like fire, says God. My word is like fire, and I speak through my prophets, says God. And God's prophets will speak now into the earth, and we will speak fire in the sovereignty of our being. We will not allow our bodies to be touched. We have the power to shut the sky that no rain may fall during the days of our prophesying. And we have power over the waters to turn them into blood and to strike the earth with every kind of plague as often as we desire. Stand. Stand in your sovereignty. Stand in your anointing. Stand in the power of the Holy Spirit. Stand in the power of God. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and these things will be added unto you.